Yo, what's happening? How we doing? Uh, I believe you're still muted, Turbo. Uh, GM, GM, guys, hope you can hear me all right. Um, if uh, if somebody on stage can go ahead and say something, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm connected, even though I did this stupid firmware update, uh, and, and I'll get this going in a second. I got to say, that new track from Seven, that's a heater. Everybody, man, I see everybody pulling up. GMGM, man, so many just incredible people pulling up. I'm so excited, man. Uh, guys, you're gonna be a part of the conversation, definitely. We're gonna be talking about Web3 gaming today. Uh, you know, we, we want to find out what your thoughts are, what you guys are thinking about, you know, how you feel about Web3 gaming. Because, you know, Jay's not, uh, you know, as Jay said, he's not a gamer, right? But now all of a sudden, he's like a Madden king talking about whooping everybody's rear ends and game right. of Madden. I'm like, yeah, he's, he's coming in hot on this thing. Hey, hey, you know what? That's okay. I hope you can hear me now. Uh, I'm feeling much better. Uh, so here's the deal. While I'm not a gamer, I understand that this is a huge, huge ecosystem. It's a an emerging market. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities for a lot of people uh, in, you know, different verticals to do what they got to do to make some cash. And, uh, and so with that being said, like, we understand that there's a lot of attention coming, you know, into our ecosystem via gaming. And so while I'm not a gamer, I understand markets and I understand coins and I understand, you know, how we can make this stuff happen. So, you know, we're, we're going to be, I've talked to AJ, uh, he's going to, he's, he's out the rest of this week and then into next week he's back home, but you know, him and I are, you know, we're in turbo uh, and everybody like, you know, we're all going to start taking advantage of being able to read these charts of these, uh, these gaming coins and, and seeing like, where can we find opportunities to, uh, to make some money and, and stack that up and then do with it, you know, whatever you want, you want to earn more Bitcoin, you want to, you know, get more NFTs, whatever you do. But uh, we are literally going to start uh, looking at all these gaming coins. And so we got Coin uh, Gecko pulled up, all the different gaming tokens. We got the four charts on TradingView. If you guys uh, are interested, we'll be uh, looking at some some charts later. Uh, and so make sure that you uh, tap in on the live stream if that's something that you want to see. Because not only is it Did we see my... shop? No, 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 no. It's just a little, no, little no. Just a little house cleaning, man. Uh, obviously, Corey's got something he wants to talk about for the uh, the chop shop today, which I am super excited for. What you got for us, man? No, I just wanted to know if we skipped the chop shop. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just uh, you know, like uh, we used to do house cleaning, right? Just do a little house cleaning before uh, before we get going, because uh, you know the chop shop will be fun, and you know it'll then we'll get into some gaming talk for sure. Uh, but yeah. I mean, it's the day before Thanksgiving. I mean, clearly, the chop shop is extremely important. It's. You Will know, you be having pizza at your Thanksgiving, Jay? On Thursday or on Friday? Yeah, on Thursday. I don't know. I don't know. You know, here's the deals. We got the uh, we got the um, honey baked ham earlier this week, and uh, I've already had a couple ham sandwiches. Like you know, we just didn't we didn't wait, right? Like. You know that uh, those things are so darn good. If you've not had a honey baked ham, uh, shout out to Honey Baked and their hams. They're delicious. Uh, that would be great to get a sponsorship from Honey Baked. I would eat a ham a week if that's the if that's the case. Like, so just send us ham. You should not. You should not eat a ham a week. Okay, and maybe a little bit of ham, but eating the whole ham, probably not necessarily the best maybe idea. It's small ham. It's small I, ham. Small uh, ham. I'm I'm gonna put you on I'm gonna put you all on some alpha. This is financial advice that I'm about to inform you all on because uh, if you don't know, Popeyes does the Cajun turkeys for Thanksgiving. Have you had this before? No. What is this? Yeah, Popeyes has a whole Cajun Thanksgiving turkey. You have to like order them early. Okay. Oh my god, bro. Wait, they bro, cook you a whole turkey? I, yeah. Oh my god, dude, and it is. I love it. I, I never do it. But I, but the people that it's kind of expensive a little bit. You know, Wait a second, like thirty five dollars a mile though. Popeyes, yeah. Popeyes before, Cajun turkey. Before, before you get before you get drawn in by this horrible Popeyes chicken turkey or whatever the fuck is going to happen to you. <laughs> Popeyes you this, chicken turkey. Uh, no 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 no. Listen, you you come with me and we'll go get a deep fried turkey from a fucking uh, amazing situation. We got it one year, dude. Twenty eight bucks and it was the best turkey we've ever fucking had. Uh, and uh, I, 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 it'll probably be more expensive now because I, it was forever ago, but, um, literally it's, it's right in, like, as you get into Cartersville, like they crush it, man. It's oh. the best, like you will not even, 
I'll, I'll get one and I'll bring it to you. Like, just so you can taste it. Like literally I've never wanted another Turkey. Uh, Deep fried Turkey is delicious. I, I 100,000% delicious man. Seven. So, so your, your Turkey talk got you freaking excited, bro. I've never heard you drop so many F bombs <laughs> in a one. No, no, no. In one the, take. I was like, the, good the, night. The swear jar. Eth appreciates your donation. Thank you, sir. It just made me mad that, uh, that he, was, he came in so hot with come get this deep fried Popeye's chicken. And I was like, what do you want to kill him? Like I had to, I was like, what? I, I was like, no, 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 no. So, so I did a, just a quick Google search here and then, uh, here we can just throw this up on the screen for anybody that is watching. Um, you know, you can get a Cajun style Turkey for $100, $99 plus sales tax, if applicable shipping included right to your door, a Popeye's Cajun style Turkey hand rubbed and infused with signature blend of Louisiana seasonings or Louisiana. Yo, fuck turkey. Dude, you can hey, hey, I don't like turkey. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm with you, man. That's, that's why I said ham. That's, hey, uh, hey, hey. that's why I said ham. A hundred right. American dollars? A hundred American dollars. For a full turkey. Yeah, that's a deal, for bro. A, for a damn spicy turkey. That's a trash bag filled with cardboard. What do you mean? <laughs> 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 Carrie, do you guys celebrate it's Thanksgiving? It's delicious. I, like, it wouldn't make sense, I don't think. But do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving? No. Not, well, not tomorrow. We, we celebrate, like, uh, last month. Okay. And uh, it, it makes was awesome. sense that we celebrated. Yeah, no, I know. No, I know. No, well, I think it does, right? Doesn't I don't know where did Columbus land first? I, he didn't even land. Uh, yeah, down in some islands uh, down in, like the, in the Caribbean, uh, or something. Caribbean coast. The Spanish, and, uh, the Spanish. And Kerry, not only did he land there, but killed every single indigenous person on the island. <laughs> all of them. Killed all yeah. of them. Every one of them. Don't believe and burned the libraries. Don't get me started. They burned the libraries. There is like some 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 infinite knowledge that we are missing out on because that shit happened. And like 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 medicines and like and like science, like technologies that we have no idea. I don't want to turn this into a conspiracy space, but just but it's still chop shop time. You know what? And, uh, it just, uh, <laughs> yeah, it it, uh, it, it just Spanish. We need to have a conspiracy theory show. Go ahead, Kerry. Sorry. That's all I'm saying. I'm just like the Spanish man with their like inquisition and their like burning of books and stuff. Not so cool. That's all. If I you, a fan you you're out there. I love you though. Sat around sitting crisscross applesauce with Indians on Thanksgiving and it was all bullshit. Correct. Yeah, that's total garbage. Well, and I got my information from a book. It's called the, the People's History of the United States. Uh, and it was by an author who took a bunch of journals and he took all of the journals and wrote the history from their own journals. And, and in the beginning, they talk about Christopher Columbus, his whole like his whole journey and stuff. And uh, and they said they would like sharpen the swords and they would just cut the natives with the sword to see if they were sharp. They'd like make them carry them around like piggyback style, like. It got to the point where the people were killing their babies because they didn't want them to grow up in that world. Okay. That's how bad it was. Yeah. All right. Well, no, this is no, I know it's not Columbus, but uh, you guys. Sorry to bring everybody down. down. Louise. Go ahead, Mike. Save save Turbo, please. Yeah, he's going to watch that uh, Napoleon movie that's coming out. Say that one more time. Are you guys going to watch the Napoleon movie? I don't. No, I probably not. Exist. I, I probably won't. I'm not a movie guy. Is that the stigma we get? We watch Napoleon on Thanksgiving? No, I'm watching Thanksgiving, the killing movie. Thanks killing. Thanks killing. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's freaking right. hilarious. Yes. Has any now? Make sure that you guys, you know, find it. I think it's on Netflix. If it's not on Netflix, I know that it's on uh, YouTube. Yeah, I know it's going to be terrible, but I'm going to watch it anyways. Oh. I mean, listen, it's got its, uh, it's like a, a, a D movie, right? Like, so it's very low budget. Uh, and yeah, that's, they that's were, the appeal to it. They were running out of movies to put out because of the strike. And they were like, fuck, man, if we get to thanks killing, we're done. That's it. That's the last movie we're putting out. And they put it out and they had a deal like three days later. <laughs> hey, Jay, Chang, real yeah. talk. Real talk. Yo. Real talk. Mm -hmm. Keep deflecting. I formally challenge you to do the Sandra's mustard challenge. Yes, that's what oh, I'm talking about. Snake. I didn't want to bring it up. Snake. 
You are a Didn't dirty bring it up, snake, but... you, Corey. I, uh, I did see that in our DM chat this morning in the Web3 breakfast, but I just glazed over it. I didn't want to call attention to it. <laughs> but now you've done this publicly, so... Yes, exactly. All right, uh, fine. It's not uh, going away, bro. Under one condition, under one condition, I get to make my own mustard. What? What, uh, what kind of shit is that? Why? Well, he's a chef. How are you gonna make mustard, man? How are you? I, let, let, no, no, real, real time. With mustard, how are you gonna must, make your own mustard? No, mustard seed, make... mustard powder, vinegar, turmeric, uh, maybe some other herbs and spices. I'm not really sure, but yeah, like make mustard. Yes, and horseradish. If you make, if you add horseradish, um, it makes it a little bit spicy yeah, as well. Perfect. So it's fantastic. Yeah, that sounds like a horrible idea. though. Okay, if you want to eat your own homemade J Chains brand mustard for the mustard challenge, I am by I, I think I'm behind that. Because okay. I don't know that it's gonna be better than any regular mustard. <laughs> I will as long as I want some. This, you know what, this, is, this is this is what I'm gonna do. I ex Corey, coach, appreciate you, sir. I accept your challenge. And today, <laughs> when I leave the office, I'm going to the store to get all of the ingredients that I need. And tomorrow I will live stream me making my mustard and then doing the mustard sandwich challenge. And I will call yeah. and I will call someone else out. Uh, if I could just get a list of all the people that have done it already. So I don't call anybody out. That's already been done this. Cause listen, I've seen, Shirt list. I've seen Carrie and I saw you like when you take a bite, like you both did this weird, like choke, cough, laugh from the well, mustard. I literally inhaled mustard. <laughs> I know you both did. Like it was one of the, you both did the same exact thing. It was like, a, <laughs> but it was like a laugh. Uh, it was really comical. And, and that's what I'm afraid of that. I'm going to make that same, you know, move. That's just like, you know, excess mustard causes like this uh, human reaction, but I'll do it. So Bro, do, do, you, do you do practice? I'm sorry, Mama Bear. I didn't mean to cut cut you in there. No, that's I, you know, okay. like that's okay. You're good. Sorry, I jumped in. Sorry, Turbo. I was just gonna tell you a mustard practice. Practice ahead of time. Oh, I, I just have to say this. Like, just even you guys talking about it, it's like making me sick. Like, I hate mustard. Like, I don't know what it is about mustard. Yeah. If I see somebody put that yellow sauce on something. It is like instantly makes me want to throw up. You know what? Bro, like, you know how I am with food. You know what's terrible for you? Is I was uh, literally thinking in this, like, the last few, you know, 30 seconds or so, who I was going to call out. And I was going to call out somebody in the community. Uh, but you just sealed the deal uh, that it, it is going yeah, to be terrible. It's going to end up being you after what you just said. Uh, you could have put a poker face on there and I would have literally picked someone else. But now. Turbocito, tomorrow never... expect me calling you out. Now you don't have to do the craft mustard thing. You can go ahead and just yeah. you know get the yellow stuff from uh, from the store, uh, and that's totally fine. But it's uh, can I just pay a donation? Is this like the ice Absolutely bucket challenge? No. no, 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 no. Well, it's not a challenge. It's like a threat. You know what I mean? <laughs> a challenge is like, yo, you can do this or you can do this. You guys are just literally just starting me like you're in, you're doing this. Yeah, like, this no, is, yeah, you are. Yeah, I guess this is an it's an initiation turbo. At the end of the day, you're right. This is uh, straight up you're okay. being forced to do something, and if you don't do it, you're out. Your job depends on it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> look, all right, look. If, listen, you do if eating must things you hate the most. If you hate you doing know, cardio, you got to do more cardio. If you hate doing sit ups, you got to do more. Shut up, Corey. If you hate the <laughs> Do more mustard. Darn right. More comfortable with He's food. absolutely correct. You do more mustard, and you're gonna you're gonna eventually find a fondness for mustard, or at least build up a tolerance, so you don't gag every time you see somebody put it on a sandwich. <laughs> oh, this is about to go viral after this video. Oh, uh, bro, you should see the video of me trying to eat some. I don't even know what the shit was that Jay tried to get me to eat, like when we were in L.A. No, I, I can't. Like, I will literally like just gag repeatedly. Like, I can't even like look at it. Like, it's insane. It's never gonna get. This thing is never gonna make it into my mouth. What was I don't it? remember. It was like it was like rice. We put some rum in it. Do you remember that? Oh god. Uh, right, right. like... Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah, man. We're not gonna tell that yeah. story today, anyway. Um. All right. Yeah. Not today. No. Not today. That'll be on our. That'll be on uh, Stars Arena. 
Uh, you got to buy a yeah, ticket for that. You got to buy the ticket to the uh, to the access there. Make sure you short turbo uh, long J chains over there on the Stars Arena. We appreciate you all very <laughs> <My> much. <God. laughs> hey, someone's got a challenge up. I saw I see Pyro in the room. She's uh, she's next too with turbo. Oh, maybe that turbo. Mustard. Maybe you could call her out. That that's that'll be the chain uh, of how we do things. So get ready, Pyro. Uh, hopefully you like mustard, or actually we hope you hate mustard because I think those videos those reactions will be the best anyway. So all right, she hates it. Just saying. Okay. Well, let's let's move on. Let's move on, guys. Thank you for uh, joining us here for Web Three Breakfast. That was the Chop Shop. So, uh, you know, brought to you uh, by Corey, who who demanded that we did not skip the Chop Shop today. So, thank you, Coach. Appreciate you. Uh, make sure that you guys do go down to the bottom right, retweet the space out, bring some friends in here. We are talking about gaming today, Web Three Gaming. Now, you can talk about the games that you're playing, the games that people are making money on. What's hot? What's upcoming? coins that you're uh, thinking about investing in uh, if that's your jam because that's more of my jam than playing a video game that's for sure so uh, that's the uh, the theme of the day today is web3 gaming is a community conversation so make sure that you guys request to come on up here uh, and uh, we only got the one rule right turbo uh, yep that's right just one rule and that's don't be a douchebag no homophobes no sexist no racist anything else after the help and no number two top uh, we're, we're taking that off the list as well well, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we'll just roll that into don't be a douchebag because you're a douchebag if you put, bring up the poop talk. Thank you. All right. And then, yeah. And then now that's it. Speaking of poop, that See, I told you. Um, like, <laughs> you can't even put it under the freaking <laughs> rules. Golly. All right. Uh, no, but, uh, you know, I do. I, right. I, I do want to kick things off uh, with this gaming talk, though, uh, because like two weeks ago. Oh, you got the squeaky chair today. I, don't know I got a about. squeaky chair. You heard uh, that, huh? Oh man, I think I thought I thought it was your back. I was like, "Damn, bro, <laughs> my, my guy needs some chiropractor." Hey, Sam. Uh, but but the game that uh, the game I'm excited about is uh, is this Chrono Forge uh, game that I've been looking that I've really been watching. Uh, Mort uh, M O R I T Z is uh, someone I follow on Twitter. Every Sunday, then they put out like a really good thread about uh, you know NFT games, NFTs that are you know coming out that are like through the list, and uh, it was one of the games that he had uh, mentioned. And at that time, we had called it, it as a point zero eight. And then it had dropped down to about 0 0.03. And now that thing has skyrocketed up to 0.18 right now. It's hitting at 0.2 last night. Been really watching it. The game looks great. They got some token drops that are coming. Uh, but the thing that I really like about the game is just the, like, the gameplay itself. It reminds me a lot of Gauntlet is, uh, is the game. Man. And I I've spent so many quarters on Gauntlet when I was a kid. Like, I don't even know if I ever really advanced in the game but that was just one of those games that i absolutely love and it really reminds me of that interesting you know, gauntlet legends was the shit oh man was that not amazing dude i was the wizard every time the wizard or the green archer those are like my two characters one of the greatest multiplayer games ever i believe four players simultaneous action what's it called gauntlet amazing gauntlet and it's still available. You can get it for the PS4 if you got a PS4, and it plays like the arcade. Like, oh, it's good. So, I, like, I think we were we're gonna decide. Um, well, I think I want to get a PlayStation, right, so I can play Madden, and then I can like whoop all your asses online. We all play Xbox. Shut up! Really? Yeah. I have yeah. like five of them. I have five of them in my basement. Did you not see Jay? Uh, you do. I don't. I just don't remember. I, again, like this is a new thing to me. Uh, you know, once we get to uh, once we get to the bull run, maybe we'll have time to play some video games together. I say we get Jay to play Party Animals with us, Turbo. What's Party Animals? I like yeah. that model, Jay. I just want to say that once we get to the bull, once we get to the bull run, then we can play video games. Because mm -hmm. then all we got to do is just check our portfolios. That's all we do. You know. Like every, no, we'll have way more work. Just refresh, refresh, re refresh. When moon, when Lambo. Kevin's like, and by that, hey, Seb is like, and by that time, I'll have all the assets for the game. I'll be ruling it, and I'll just, you know, liquidate your portfolio because you'll be buying in-game assets, right, Seb? No, nah, once we get once we get the funds, man, the work really starts. This is true. I mean, obviously, like we're not we're not stopping because the bull run starts, but um, so, all right, so gauntlet. That's a, that's not a game that you're like playing right now, making money though, right? Nah, it's an arcade game, man. I just kept taking my quarters, and now I just found this on PlayStation that I don't even have, so that just completely puts it out of the thing. But 
I think there's a lot to learn, you know what I'm saying, from this style, right? We got to take these things that we love and we got to move them in. I did see Modern had his hand up. Uh, I don't know. I know he's working. So Mama Bear, I will give you just one little skip on this only because uh, I know Modern is busy. See if he has his thing and then we'll pass it. Uh, we'll go, we can go Mama Bear and then Crypto in my veins as well. Uh, Modern, what's up, Mike? Hey, what's going on? How are you? GM, GM. Oh, man, you know. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, so I'm playing big time right now. Um, this is the one that I know the most about. I have a bunch on my list that I've been playing a little bit, dipping into. But when it comes to this economy, I know this one a little bit better. And I actually am making money right now playing this game. Um, it's a great MMO. It looks, like, visually, it looks amazing. Like, I looked at Web3 Gaming, like, literally three years ago, and they looked like garbage. And now, like, the games that are coming out are just insane. Like, on par with AAA games. Um, this one it has, it's like a crafting economy. And what they're doing right now is like a leaderboard. So you, you want to get um, utilities in the game, craft, and then you can uh, get on this leaderboard and they have like airdrops. So I got lucky. I finished like a 1600 on out of 5,000. So I'm getting like a 5,000 big time uh, drop. So that's one way to make money. Um, you can literally just get NFT drops by just grinding out in the game. Like I was playing with some people the other day and this guy got a $600 uh, pair of gloves that dropped. So there's definitely different ways to make money. There's, you have to have, like obviously the earlier you are into it, if you get utilities, you can just spend a little bit of money to make money. I, I did put a YouTube video about it, how I'm making like 400 bucks a month on my YouTube. But um, yeah, like you, can, you, you can go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like that's a car payment by playing a game. Like people got to realize like that. Yesterday, too. Yesterday, I was crafting an hourglass, which is an NFT that you craft in the game. And I, you get like these little like slot rolls, like a, like a casino almost. And then uh, there's an item you get in the game that you can use for these slot rolls. And I, I got a skip rarity here. So instead of making an uncommon one, I made a rare one. So I went up from making a $100 item to like a $400 item. So I, I'm in profit, 300 bucks, boom, one night. Like, just like that, right? So um, it, it, it gets that really good feel. You really feel that like you're doing something for a purpose. You're playing a fun game because even if you're not making money, the game is actually fun to play with friends. And then you have that always that chance to get that drop. Uh, like I just got my brother-in-law and my niece on the game and they're enjoying it. And like, hopefully, I hope they get something that's like uh, drop a couple hundred, hundred bucks for them, right? Yeah. So uh, like, uh, see, like, these are the types of things that what we can do is like, uh, you know, uh, we talk about like the old side hustle stuff, right? You stack a couple of these things up, you play a couple of games. And now, look, look, one covers an entire car payment. Like for 400 bucks, you're driving a decent car. Uh, that's pretty crazy. Like you, and you do a couple of games like that. And now, uh, you know, maybe your, uh, your living situation doesn't cost you anything because you're, you're gaming, right? Yeah. Like my strategy here is like I invested a little bit of money in into it. My uh, strategy is recoup that investment through like the stuff that I'm crafting now. Now that I've gotten going, and then um, and then that's it. Then everything I make from there is just fun. I can just have fun. I don't care about profit. There's no motion to tie to it. None of that. You just have fun enjoying the game. Any little profit is you know just side stuff on the side. Um, I almost feel like uh, coming from like I'm a miner. I'm a Bitcoin miner. Coming from a mining aspect, it's almost like you're the miner in the game and as you're playing you're doing you know the work of the miner and you're extracting value from the game very cool got a uh absolutely they got a comment that uh alex um alex had typed in over on uh youtube about a game called play zap has anybody heard of this it's like a mobile game right see this is the types of thing and this is a it's a blockchain game uh as well as what it says on uh Maybe BNB, smart chain. Uh, I would have to check. Take a look at this. It's got the, the PZP token, uh, in-game utility token that fuels the Play's app ecosystem, unlocking the full potential of the game economy. See, this is the type of shit that is going to win, right? Because it's those games like the Candy Crushes. That's what gets the attention, you know. Like that, and I know there's a lot of gamers. Like we know all the statistics and all that stuff, but like we're moving to a more mobile world, right? Where like the whole idea is to, you know, get you know, mobile devices in the hands of people who, you know, need the access to the technology and stuff. And so that's where it's going. And so these mobile focus games are the, the ones that are going to win for sure, especially the crypto ones. I'm excited about that one. Even though I don't know anything about yeah. it. Like, I don't know anything about it. It's a comment that came in on a, a live stream. So we got to do some research on it. <laughs> Statistically speaking, there are more mobile gamers than console or PC gamers. More mobile than console? That, well, that would make sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah. Most definitely. And mama bear, you had your hand up. I, you know, it's always so nice to be around gentlemen, but I was just getting, trying to get back in line. <laughs> um, good morning, you guys. So Pyro yeah. said, um, she is preparing to drive out of town and has um, things she's doing, but she's listening. So she just wanted to say, GM, everybody. Um, I have to talk to you guys about the goons of Balatroon. So they are an NFT game and it's pretty cool because you, you they Bellatron? minted B-A-L-A-T-R-O-O-N. It's pretty cool. There's a lot to unpack. I might give it to you fast. Go for it. So they minted summer of 21, um, it's 96, 96 or 96, 95. I'm not sure total in the collection and um, you, they're bulls and bears. So they're pretty cool, right? There's rarities all over the place. It's, it's, it's traits, but um, it is a card game. So similar to um, either Magic the Gathering or um, what's the other one, Pokemon and all that stuff where you have powers and you can attack and health is given, all of that stuff. It's fully live. You can play the game still. Um, they've been quietly building on the backside and um, you buy cards and it's so fun. This is a pack opening right here. So if you have packs to open, you would put them down in your hand in his hand and he would open them up and reveal them and it's really cool they're that nfts was, that was really cool like how that that scene like how was you know i think you maybe saw my reaction i was like whoa that was a this is a pretty yes. cool site you know for this game the goons of Balatrin. it's really cool I like the name well you it's well they call themselves goons right so um gm goons Turbo, so the turbo's cool been called my goon <laughs> turbo is <laughs> turbo is sweeter than that oh i know so the <laughs> you can you can buy and sell cards you can trade the cards they have um you know peer-to-peer -peer, uh card sales that are over through uh, sphere they're also on arbitrum and ethereum as well as have launched on beam as well so um you're able to uh, play and do all of the stuff on Beam, but it's really exciting. They have their first tournament coming up on Thursday. It's a beta test. You can earn a hundred bucks um, while playing their game. You have you used to earn G Gob, right? So Gob token. You used to be able to earn the Gob token just by holding goons and cards, and now you have to buy it. So the other day it was uh, four one thousandths of a penny, and now it, and it went up to like um, almost eight one thousandths of a penny. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when it is, you know, two x. Um, and you now they have chunks, which is their reward token. So it's can live. A, and can I ask you a question? Yeah. On their website, yeah. on their website, it says that their metaverse partnership uh, in the section there. It's got a mutable. Do you know what that entails? Um, I haven't gone that far down the rabbit hole, but I do have um, communications with the guys. Let me see if um, I mentioned in the group that I was coming in here. So it's possible that a goon could show up. Um, I can definitely get the information at, a, at another time yeah, cool. um, yeah. unless somebody's in here. Yeah, yeah. let's talk more online. No, they, Offline. They have, their own, they have their own lands, right? It's all ready. They have, they have their own lands. They have a lot of big plans coming. So it, they're making moves. They're just quiet. Nice. Love it. Yep. Go for it. Enrique Suave says he likes spider yeah. tanks. That's a Gala game, right? Yeah. Oh, like spider tanks. I've been wanting to play that one. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that the uh, the Gala token, you know, tokenomics are whack. But I do love the people over at Gala, uh, you know, the games. Uh, so I got a chance to go to the first Galaverse, the one out in, uh, I think it was L.A., right? No, Vegas. Oh, I forget where the heck it was. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, it was one of the coolest Web3 experiences I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, so if you get a chance to do a Galaverse, do it. Most definitely. And you know what? Hey, uh, the Shallon, Ooh. I hope I said your name correct. Uh, you had your hand up, um, but uh, we actually are at our workout time. So we will definitely get you as soon as we come back from this workout, waiting on Coach to hit the whistle, which should be any moment. When we do our Healthy Minds... <laughs> There it is. Hey. That's what we're waiting on. It's time for those healthy minds, healthy bodies, and healthy portfolios. Guys, this is, this is an important part of the show where we take an opportunity just to do a little micro workout, which does give benefit. So get up. I'm sorry, I was switching get, to not being on voice isolation, but I was already on 
not voice isolation. So now I'm back to voice isolation. So tomorrow I'll have to switch off of it. All right, get working. Let's get those workouts in. Let's go. Oh, this is another one. Hush. Shut up, J. Kane. Hush. That note was for you. I got I gotta start viewing the turbo. That gets a little intense. Yeah, my bad. Lunk alarm. Yeah. I did I didn't know I was off the mute. Oh, that's another hot so one. So I looked from, down and I was like, oh. that's, that's another hot one from Nessie. Another hot one. <laughs> Sorry for my grunts and groans. I just oh, love hearing God. you guys just grunting. And don't, say you guys. don't say you guys. Don't say you guys. That was like, just Turbo? That was, and that was him alone. Oh my God, Turbo. <laughs> You're a fucking animal, bro. I love it. Anyways. Turbo is a deer and rut. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was on mute, so I was like Turbo, getting it because like, is, dude, is the bear market? Dog, I had I, I went down. I, so like right before the show, I go down and I get my son. He's uh 15, and this mug is like yeah. this dude is a monster. So like I run down, and I grab his dumbbells real quick. And I was like, oh shit! Like he he got some weight on these things. So I was like, well, I'm not taking the weight off. You know what I mean? Like these are my son's dumbbells. I'm gonna. And, yo, when I started hitting those curls and stuff, man, it was a little bit heavier than I thought. You know what I mean? I thought I was on mute. I'd be getting wild with it. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to these uh, fitness people. That, but that's real, man. Like, hey, it's all right. That was real human emotion there. Getting it. Put Putting in the work. All right. Let's get to some of these hands. Uh, the Shaolin. What's happening, fam? Hey, how's it going? So you guys are talking about Web3 Gaming. And, one, I love seeing the people that I uh, spend some time with given that we're all getting excited for Art Basel. So shout out to all of you. Um, yeah, so I'm the community manager for D-Lab Games. Would you mind if I posted just a quick little trailer? Just that way for people who are interested and they can actually look at it. But um, yeah. it's pretty much a art racing game that people can play that's fun. It's um, on Matic in terms of Polygon, Ooh. in terms of Chains. But the NFTs are actually, um, the Adventure Pass that we have is actually ETH-based. So... We've been doing this since early March. Um, we have been building games. We actually have two other games coming out in the near future. Um, and so it's been actually three years in the making. And what I really love about this is being a part of the community uh, management team. Sorry, I had my son in the background. Um, is the fact that we are actually built the game first. And then we came to the Web3 space and we came into the community saying, hey, this is all of our thoughts. These are all of our visions. And then we basically leaned into the Web3 side of things and just were community driven, right? So we you know, explored different opportunities within community engagement and where we're like focused on DQuest and Galaxy and, and, and Trophy and all those other opportunities. But it's really been fun seeing how basically a Web2 company that our CEO is the former CEO of um, uh, Nexon. So if people know Maple Story, and then he basically built this um, production company our gaming company to you know really drive a lot of awareness in terms of what's what can be possible in the future because you know i know everyone talks about game fi tokens and things like that but i think it's really impactful to understand that like the web um two space of gaming is really built off of an ecosystem inside of a you know a, essentially an echo chamber right like it's like oh if you're on you know this platform it's only within like epic it's only within um their specific you know brand of business and you can't get outside of it right like if you play ea sports you can't go to 2k and play basketball these worlds collide right but now that we do things on chain you can actually take your assets and you can put them in other places and other spaces which i think is super impactful the other part obviously too is you can actually have ownership of your things right people talk about csgo and and all these other games where you have these wonderful assets that you know people are willing to pay six figures seven figures for but again, it's within their ecosystem. You can't transport that and you can't own it. 
Um, same thing with Fortnite, same thing with so many other places, you see the opportunities. And so for us at DLive Games, we have this card game that's fantastic. Give me one second while I put it up on the Jumbotron. I think uh, there's we, an opportunity. We, uh, yes, what do we, um, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just, I keep yeah, forgetting what we call Turbo. What do we call the uh... space station? The space station. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. I like the jumbo. I like the jumbo. I like better. the space uh, station. I like the space. I like the center command. Is really what I like uh, because it reminds me of Star Trek. Because we can't call it the it's nest anymore because there's no bird unless it's ground control. Come on, it's, yeah, come on. Where SpaceX has got to be like you know. It's called the I think elevated guys. I just want to say that for the record, live life in the abundance. Always the elevated, like Cristiano here. Yeah. It's like the control tower, really, if you want to go It's called hard. the Xbox. I call it the in Xbox. In Canada? In Canada, we call it the doobly-doo. That's it. You have your own term. Wait, you have your own term for <laughs> You have Canadian spaces only that you guys can get into? Do you have them token-gated? The doobly-doo? No, it's not token-gated. We just, we just, only. You know, it's just when, when there's more Canadians than anyone else in the room, we just we refer to it as a, the doobly-doo. Put the new Mabel in the doobly doo. I don't know why you were talking. Oh, I just, I, I did just post it in the doobly doo. Hey, what was that pirate Sorry, word that you said is funny when you say it in a pirate's voice? I was trying to think of it the other day. Gargonzola. Me too. Gargonzola. Right. Please don't start Gargonzola. with a pirate's voice. Uh, but you know, before we get too completely off the rails here, <laughs> I do want to say hello to Cristiano, uh, my homie. What's up, Cristiano, man? Thank you so much for pulling up, man. This has been uh, this. Oh, you're in Florida. That's um, why you can be I'm here, bro. Here you to, uh, issue a complaint. It's called the Xbox 360. Mm. Let's see if you can okay. see it like that. There we go. We made it to Florida. The first I'm in Florida. Drivers. Hey, we outside of Florida. Just, uh, apparently, there's a spot over here where I can. Uh, my mom said you got to be careful. You know, there's gators that attack you. You got to run fast down this path. So I'm like, are we doing that for show? So I have a spot where gators are going to try to attack me. This is so much fun. I like that. I'm going to go fuck. Oh, just, 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 you just run the shit out. Out. Just oh, run in angles. That. Just run in angles because they can't. They can't run. They can't turn. So you just run in angles. Oh, dude, I went to college down here, man. All the oh. drinking parties, it was, it was a thing, right? You'd be like drinking. You'd be out there by the pond. And you'd, hear, oh. and you'd be like, run, run, motherfucker. <laughs> just. Chase nope. you up from the pond. You just have to run inside. Nah. Yeah. I like yeah, that. I suppose there was didn't didn't some yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Shouts out to the gators, but Shaolin. It makes you feel uh, like you better than the dinosaurs. You know what I mean? Like that motherfucker's been around forever, and you're like, I just outran a dinosaur. Like I would survive Jurassic Park. I, I rock. No. The well, velocity, dinosaurs no, are those birds. Velocity, those velociraptors, oh. man. They come up. They, they they gang up around you. They, they corner you. That's true. T Rex are that, actually pretty slow. Right. You can outrun a T Rex. Better don't take mm. notes. They they, uh, they put out a sound of what the real T Rex sounded like. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. It's like a turkey. Like they were like, this is what a T Rex actually sounded like. <laughs> How would like, they know? How the world would they know? <laughs> the turkey with teeth. That's what we scared of this whole time. <laughs> There's There's turkey oh. and everybody. Uh, so I would yes, be so mad. Okay, we do need to get back to Shaolin because he was he was yeah. finishing well, his point. I, I wanted. I did want to. I did want to hit something with Sean that you said, right? Because we were talking about this before the show. You said this is something you guys are doing over with your uh, with your company. Uh, you know, like the problem is, is like with the gaming with the gaming space, right? Like how much? I don't know what it costs, right, for these servers to keep them up and going, right? So after the original Call of Duty is no longer, you know, it, they've moved on. They're three, four games away. You know, like for them to keep that game open, I, you know, I, I would assure that there would be some kind of cost that would get. You know, that would go into that. So in my mind, right, like it, it feels like the gaming conglomerates are like, look, we want to control and we want to push people to the next game, right? Um, and then that's why, like, you know, we lose those things, right? And I think we were we, before the show, we we're saying that having the ability to take that asset and just take it to another game is really the kind of the secret. And it sounds like that's what you guys are doing uh, over there with your S project. Actually, so I think you hit two points that are really, really important. One. Yes, absolutely. You want to be able to own your assets and move it and migrate it to wherever it, you know, you want to play it, right? Wherever it accepts it. And um, the also the ability is the fact that the second point is, you know, when you take something on chain and you make it open source and you make these things happen, you can actually actually give it to your community. So let's say, um, right, for Rumble Racing Stars, the game that we've built now, and it's open beta. If you want to play this card game, but, you know, let's say two, three years from now, it's really no longer supported because financially it's just, you know, not sustainable. 
um, at the end of the day, we could just hand it over to the community and they can take ownership of it and they can, you know, run with it themselves. And that's something that's very possible nowadays that in a lot of ways wouldn't be. So this is where like the future of blockchain technology is really advancing, not only gaming and everything that we do, but, you know, it's just gives so much more opportunity that we never had before. So it's just a, it's a new wave of things and, and it's exciting to be part of this, you know, early on. Awesome. 100%. Yeah. For sure. I see Grateful's down there. What's up? What's up, fam? Grateful. Let me ask you really quick. Yeah. Are you gaming with ordinals now, too? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, shots I'm fired. Just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're gaming with inscriptions. <laughs> What'd you say? Inscriptions was actually built for gaming. Actually, Pingu's, uh, their creators and developers are like super old school gamers. Um, and yeah, they're building a bunch of games, dude. <laughs> they already really? they already built too many games. Um, and I don't know, they're going to be making an announcement soon. But the other day, the founder sent me a link to test out like a bunch of shit on their site. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that stuff's going on. And with bitmaps, that's like, you know, the metaverse and Bitcoin. So, um <laughs> Things are crazy, no. man. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk about ordinals this morning. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I know I did. I did. Shouldn't Bitcoin but just you. stay That's in its awesome. lane though? No way, man. Innovation and development and 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 permanence. Dude, it's just like the collectors aspect of things with the history of what Bitcoin's gonna become, I think is gonna be absolutely insane, bro. I keep saying it. They don't believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, I can see uh, uh, the uh, I can totally understand your side because uh, back in the spring, I was like, dude, what the hell is going on? I'm like, what are these people doing? This is not like the purpose of, of Bitcoin at all. But I don't know, man, just like with the rocket ship of innovation that's happened and the building that's happened over such a short time frame. Mm -hmm. It's cra there's a lot of crazy shit going on, dude, and it's actually really, really cool. So I don't know. It doesn't hurt to, to get involved and at least start looking into it more um, with a lot of people that are actually, you know, been behind like the engineering and, and the innovation side since it first started back in whatever it was, like the end of January, February, because it's pretty interesting. Um, but uh, I did have like I had a ton of games, dude, back in like 2020 and 2021 that pretty much all fell off uh pretty hard um one of them that was super interesting was blockchain monster hunt and that thing tore dude like they partnered with animoca brands they have they had a bunch of huge partnerships and they're on eth chain is a i think there's four chains they're on i know they're on eth matic and bnb um the graphics are pretty cool. It's NFT collectibles. They do challenges all the time. So when you play online, you're finding another, other monsters and leaderboards to get free NFTs and stuff like that. But just, uh, I don't know if it's worth looking into for anybody. I just like to throw some crazy shit out there that could pop off because it didn't totally die. It still has some volume. The market cap's like under a million dollars right now. So I think it's like, under a penny and the all-time high was three dollars and thirty cents so it's like to me something like that at that point with the partnerships they had and everything and they still have and i mean animoca brands is a big name and they have a lot of other partnerships but at, at that point where it is now it's like eh it doesn't hurt to throw a hundred bucks in it there's like it literally can't be liquidated anymore unless it totally dies and then you're not really losing any money you just throw some chump change at it. Yeah, a moon bag. Um, a moon bag. Yeah, a moon bag. And then like Denimon. Denimon was a big game. I, I knew people that know nothing about crypto and didn't even hold crypto that knew about Benamon. So I could totally see that coming back. Um, and uh, Age of Gods was another one that tore pretty hard and that's super beat down. And uh, Sin City Crypto. I don't know mm. how this will... Uh, play out with like all the talk of gta the new gta being integrated with crypto but it was pretty much like a blockchain uh gta right and so they have gambling in there 
um, in their world and everything. You can use a ton of different crypto assets, but that actually has held pretty good volume. That market cap is like, I think around nine or $10 million and their daily volumes, like $1.5 million. So for something that's super be down, that's pretty decent to see, I guess, um, that it's held its own a little bit, but for people that are more into the gaming stuff besides me, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you guys what anybody who, who has an opinion on this, what is your guys opinion of, uh, alluvium? at this moment i'm a fan of it uh, uh like as far as like i like andrew wall i like what like you know as far as like uh what he's doing you know for broadcasting all that stuff so i support him and so i support alluvium uh and, and i know that it gets a lot of good attention uh it's actually you know if you were to look at you know top gaming coins like it, it's in like the one two three four six in the top six um you know as far as you know, it's in the top you know it's in the top 100 it's ranked number 82 as far as overall market cap goes and i think that you know, it's a uh, that's a solid choice for you know, they've been building in the background. They've been building in this bear. I think it's going to I think it's going to do pretty well in this next, you know, iteration of when gaming comes up. That's my opinion. That's yeah. And, my you, opinion, know, and I, you know, oh, yeah. Man, speaking of, can I throw, oh, sorry, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Can I throw one thing back out there real quick? All right. Sure. One thing. <laughs> grateful. Just, just, one just, thing. One thing, man. Just to ruffle up some feathers. <laughs> so we talk a lot about the attention economy and people like to move where hype is yep. and money flows so i'm just gonna say man with the attention economy once this big ordinal wave kicks in <laughs> and we actually are in a bull market yeah. it doesn't take more than 30 seconds to swap a bunch of eth into bitcoin and jump into ordinals i'm just saying all right there's, there's like less than 100 people that like ordinals but those hundred people are very, they're very excited yeah, about right, it. Dude. Uh, yeah, here's, right. here, here's the deal. Uh, well, I, I have gone onto my Trello board and I have marked down, let me just pop it open to make sure that uh, I'm speaking factually, November 30th as the Bitcoin Ordinal Show. So that's next Thursday. Next Thursday will be a Bitcoin Ordinal's only show. That's all we're allowed to talk about. Chop Shop will be about nothing but Bitcoin. And then we're going to talk about nothing but Bitcoin. Oh my gosh. The rest of the show. Sounds horrible. Well, that's what you we're sound doing. Just like, that's what we're you doing. sound just so like the Nashville Bit House. Bitcoin it's only. Heaven. It's a Bitcoin maximum. You silent the whole thing? It's a, it's, a, it's a quiet space and a whole hour of quiet. <laughs> I'll show yeah, up. Just like, no, I'll show up. I love Bitcoin. Oh, An mean, hour of silence. We owe everything, every one of us that's here for any bit of blockchain. You owe it to uh, Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin put us on the map. So the least that we can do is sit and entertain a bunch of people crazy talking about these NFTs on Bitcoin. So uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, I do appreciate it. I will, have, I will have a very open mind because, hey, maybe that's the whole point. Change my mind. And what I will do is uh, get myself a an ordinal if somebody can convince me to get an ordinal. We we need to know, we're we're like a mini expert wanna, on that because... I'm going to go to Ord Basel with Violetta and, and I've been hanging out with like the co-creators of Ordinals on her spaces and stuff because she's been becoming friends with them because she was on that, you know, in, on, she's one of the first music on Bitcoin inscribed oh. on an Ordinal, right? And so uh, actually with the on-chain gaming, with the inscriptions at least, and I'll look into how it works over there, but I know that with inscriptions, it was created as a gaming protocol um, to essentially be a way to record your scores on-chain and record ownership of, you know, different items and things like that. So let's say you want a character, you want an item or whatever. Let's say all the traits or whatever were inscribed, you're inscribed, and, you know, you play the game, and then it says, hey, you beat this quest, right? And now you get this sword, and now your character has that sword, you know, and it's BFP and the NFT that, you know, it compiles it all. Because what's cool about this is we don't have to create a new thing called ordinals to create, you know, to make NFT-like things out of inscriptions. We can just make NFTs. Which is really cool. So it's like we're already familiar with NFTs. We're already set up for NFTs. So eScriptions just replaces the IPFS and it makes it where it's like, you know, interoperable where you can, you're essentially just using Ethereum, what it was designed for, which was to be a giant computer that we could all use. So imagine a giant, you know, if you're on Windows, a C drive, or if you're on, you know, Mac, like a, you know, a home folder or an iCloud drive that we could all use. And I could put my game code up there and you could use pieces of my game code. So within your big crazy game is my little mini game or my arcade game. And it's all up there on the chain. And you can use my art and you can use my traits because it's all inscribed. It's all publicly inscribed. 
So it's almost like that, like a public lending library of code for everyone. And if you think about that, yeah, we're going to build way faster than any AAA game studio because it's going to be 700, you know, like CEOs of different game dev companies all using the same protocol to make stuff. And then everyone's able to like, use each other's work, right? So we're kind of we're bigger than Pixar already. We're bigger than, or I guess like, you know, let's say uh, Blizzard or Activision already. We have more employees and we have more shared code base and everything like that. So yeah, like I'm excited to see them doing on Bitcoin, but it's, it's definitely already happening on inscriptions. And I'm part of like, you know, group chats where all the founders are so chill because there's like 10 of us, you know? <laughs> so we're all like, hey, why don't we all just get on a call? We all want to make this video game and we all want to do it in like 8-bit Legend of Zelda style. So like Pokemon style. So let's just do it. So we're all just working together to make like a uh, Animal Crossing type thing. <laughs> and like where it's like, yeah, you can go between shared universes. And that's what can happen here in Web3. Like that can't happen with traditional game companies you can't have a shared universe between games no way no yeah that's and that's one of the the big appeals to it and hopefully at some point you know like what you had said earlier in the show was where you take that you know you take your skin you take your character your whatever and it doesn't matter what game you're playing you're you're just that that's you that's part of it well and you know i had to explain to my mom because you know she was like really just upset about you know because like every birthday christmas whatever when anytime my kids can get money they're like yo we want Roblox or we want V Bucks or you know what I mean? Like whatever, you know, whatever game they're playing. And she's just like, that doesn't make any sense. It's such a waste. And I'm like, they're it's their action figures. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I have not bought my kids a single action figure, but I've bought millions of these characters or skins or whatever it is. Yeah. Why but Tibble, imagine if you bought like that, that skin, if that metadata was cooked onto your character forever now. So it said this character, you know, whatever, like the metadata is really the powerful thing. So you can have a character that says it has these traits and it has those names and the metadata. And then you can have any place, like you can bring it into Cyber, you know, Cyber API Club, or you could bring it into Minecraft or whatever, and it would read your metadata, right? And say, give it all these traits. And so your metadata becomes the DNA for your character. And it's so easy to program. It's so easy to write. It's no coding, right? It's just commas and enters and stuff. So it's really cool what we can do. Like we can learn to how to like write our character's DNA and decide what, you know, and Mint in the future might be like you put in your JSON file and put in what metadata you want and it'll just give you that, you know, so it'll be the same as your other characters. So it's like really cool to see what's going to happen. Hell yeah, man. That's, that's really Oh, yeah. Cool. That's definitely. Uh, let's get uh, to... I do uh, see... Gonna, uh, yes, thank you. We've got pyro, yeah, let's go Pyro, Pyro Diz, yeah. Modern, Grateful. That's the order. Let's go. Pyro, <laughs> GMGM. GM. How are you? Hello, hello. I was just going to say, I won't add too much. I won't take too much time, but... Um, the fact that a bunch of these other games are able to start building on layer twos as well will only speed up the pro the process. And then a bunch of them are finding out that certain elements don't have to actually be built on chain. Um, and so like the gas and those kind of things, and they're still interoperable if the people, you know, if, if these companies decide to do it together. So it's all about just locking arms and, and building that stuff. But yeah, even on your ordinals, I'm sorry, J Chain. I see it if they start building on that layer two. Um, I actually do see gaming going over there as well. I know. Yeah, it's it's going to go everywhere. I mean, at the at the end of the day, it's definitely going to. I mean, we're going to see use use cases for everybody. You know, and that's the beautiful thing about the Web three is that like you know you you don't you you can participate where you feel most comfortable and best suited. You know, I think one thing we haven't talked about, um, you know, and we'll, we'll go over to Walt Diz uh, on this, but you know, a thought to, to think about is like these web these Web3 games and games as a whole, right? It doesn't matter what game we're talking about. They rely on users and people playing the game, right? And when we have this huge hype economy that we've developed, uh, you know, the Web3 to be, you know, I think that that's a fear that we need to be mindful of is that maintaining those users playing the games long enough that it's going to be able to be successful. Uh, because if not, then you're going to have a group of people that are dumping a lot of money in. It's going to have that short fuse. And then, you know, they're going to have losses. And be, oh, this sucks. Like, this is so stupid. The inoperable thing, that's really where we got to get to because then that gives you the ability to, to keep your money moving forward. But I want to throw that in there just to kind of ruffle some feathers, you know, kind of get some thoughts going. But Walt Diz, you have your hand up. This is the gaming guy of gaming guys. My guy, Walt Diz, he's connected with a lot of NFT projects. If you are a gaming person down there, make sure to tap in with them. I think Thursday, we'll be talking with him about some Player 2 Studio stuff that we have going on. If not this Thursday, next Thursday due to the holidays. Well, well, that's good. Are you coming on the show? Yeah, well, man, that, of course. Well, you know, we're going to, we haven't, we haven't really, really talked about what we're doing. So this will kind of be our first opportunity. We wanted to do it with uh, Walt Diz. So, uh, but Walt. 
Uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, we had a really good turnout with our show and everything. And um, I've already talked to a few uh, communities on the back end and, and a, lo- a lot of them are like, Oh my God, that's perfect timing. Yeah, I'll be available. So, um, there's a couple more I need to talk to, but it looks like we're going to have like a full lineup and I'm, I'm so happy you guys are going to be able to be there. But, um, uh, yeah, we've had, um, a couple good games run through and I, I gotta say like one of the, the shining ones is definitely unreal kingdoms. <laughs> Dude, that guy yep. literally has checked more boxes uh than anybody else I, I mean he's got the he's got the patent rights to gambling in the metaverse whoa <laughs> he, and live streaming and live stream like he's got everything covered it is the most ridiculous thing he spent nine and a half million dollars of his own money into the game what game and is it this? looks unreal kingdoms yes, it blew platform. our yeah. damn minds we were like holy crap <laughs> like Way out of left field, just came in because a couple of the listeners invited him. And he's like, yeah, let me show you what it looks like. This game is, it's like what you hope that uh, Elder Scrolls 6 looks like. It is fantastic. Um, Yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. And, And if a community wants to actually build a game within Unreal Kingdoms, I think it was like, what, Christiana, was it 30 ETH? I think, and they'll do like a full, like fifteen square kilometer build of your of your game. And in, yeah, you can buy land in there. You can so it's live on Steam next week, and then it'll Sick. be on Xbox and PlayStation a couple weeks after that. Um, and then yeah, you'll be able to basically buy a patch of land and uh, you know farm kills in those land or, or on that land, and you basically get paid uh, in currency for every kill that's made on that land, right? So in theory, after you're done with your show, you could say, hey, let's all go over there and you know and kill some zombies. You know, like like kill some orcs or whatever, and uh, yeah, and farm some money. You know, so we're going to be doing that for the DAO. We're going to be buying a piece of land for the Puppy Punks DAO, and then we'll go there. And when you want to hang out and get some aggression out, you go do there, and you know, you go kill there, and it it puts money into the DAO. So things like that. Like he's he's set it up across all the board. That's what Walt was saying. Checked all the boxes. He's made it so we can really make some money in what he's built, and he did it. He was a disgruntled uh, board ape yacht club holder. And just didn't like the lackluster um, effort, and was like, "Fuck it, I could build it with my own team, with you know my own money," and just did it, and got it. Uh, yeah, got all these patents and got it onto platforms and everything like that, which was not an easy lift. So it was really cool, and he showed us a lot of like exclusive stuff last week. But it's going live like next week. It's on Steam, and and so uh, that's going to be where we're performing in the metaverse. Um, you know, for our Pepe Punk show and everything, we're streaming in there because he released a demo and got 8,000 downloads. And so I really think this is going to be huge. Imagine regular people on their Xbox or PlayStation can get this game and go in and see you performing in the metaverse in the, in the social space, you know? So it's 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 not nothing. <laughs> it's a big deal. And he's one of us. It's, he's DJ. You know, Cyber Ape Yacht Club. I'll, I'll pin it up if you guys want. Like, yeah, go for incredible. it. Yeah. I, I was going to say, like, it's even more fun than Dookie <laughs> Dash. I mean, can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> it is more fun than chasing uh, a key down a toilet, for sure. <laughs> and I just picked it up top. No, and he's got they, the, he's got a, he went with like a dark uh, Dark Souls type energy with it, so it's going to be like difficult. Like you're going to die a lot. Elden you know? Ring. He brought up Elden yeah. Ring. He's like, yeah, it, we want him to be as difficult as Elden Ring, which is good. Love that. Uh, yeah, I pinned it up top, and it says no one uh, says, well, no one said Unreal Kingdom on Kingdoms was going to be easy. That's Cyber Ape Club. He's the builder and founder of the whole project. Boom. Awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, who was it? Uh, Mike, were you next? I think, and then Grateful? Yeah, I think it was Mike yeah. and Grateful. And well, I couldn't hear anything you said, man, but uh, we'll chat offline. So sorry if I interrupted you there. Can you uh, Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. You're good, Mikey. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if I was rugged. Still shows Mama Bear speaking, so my space is weird. Um, yeah, so I, I'll keep it quick. Um, I was just going to say uh, um, what Pyro was talking about. I definitely think uh, games are going to move to Layer 2, especially things running on Ethereum. I think any game that's on Ethereum is going to struggle when it comes to the bull market, and we got stupid gas fees like we had last uh, last time in 2021. Um, and that's where Polygon, uh, for those Ethereum games, comes in, uh, comes into play. Um, the one thing I do like about Big Time is it does have, uh, for at least for deposits and the withdrawals, you can choose your network, Tron, Solana, whatever. Like you, there's a bunch of different networks you can use, which is nice. But the tokens are ERC721, I believe, is the, um, the NFT uh, token for Ethereum. 
Um, so there's that there. So I think any games on Ethereum are going to struggle with that. Um, but yeah, um, I have four access codes for big time. If anybody is just interested to play, they have three, uh, they expire in three days. So hit me up in DMs if you guys want to play the game. Boom. There you go. Get, get Could I touch on the uh, modern topic, J Chains? Because uh, that's actually why Ecryptions was built. Uh, so it's a layer zero instead of a layer. It's it's like the inside layer of Ecryptions versus a uh, layer two. And so it's a uh, it's no it's low gas fees. It's like you no know, cents on the dollar. Um, and so it was designed exactly for that to be the scalable solution to Web three gaming. So if you haven't checked out Ecryptions, it's just E T H you know S C R I P T I O N S. Um, I would highly check it out because that's that's literally what we're doing over there. That's what it's designed for. Um, and it's it's censorship resistant. It's decentralized. It's not centrally owned like an L2. And so it's you know it's it's the Web3 solution with like these other companies came in and tried to monetize the gas problem, and they just went back and fixed the gas problem. We just use the call data on Ethereum. Oh, there you go. Hey, you know what I was thinking? Uh, and you know we can we got a few hands, and you know we can go a little long today. AJ is not. Oh. AJ is not. He doesn't have. He's not here the rest of the week, so we can run this one a little bit longer today if you guys want. You know, we talked about this this morning, Turbo. Sometimes we want to just go a little longer, but uh, you know we got to keep everybody waiting and, and wanting more the next day. But uh, you know, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so we're not going to be here tomorrow. We're going to take the day off, spend the day with the family, but we'll be back Friday. Uh, so we'll go a little long today so that we can make up for not being here tomorrow. Yes. You know, because like I don't care about the all the tweets that I'll see, like only the real ones show up on Thanksgiving. Like eat, <laughs> eat shit. James, it's hard to have a gaming space and not have it run long right. and go like Walt and I try to make it an hour space and it ends up being like three hours and runs like two hours into expert advice. And I'm like, bro, what are we doing? <laughs> like, you know, like when are we adding the space? But it's like it's there's so much interest and the, and the yeah. room gets packed. It's just we don't do much promo. It's just, it's, it's, we're there. We're ready. I think people are ready for gaming. I agree. Yeah. And you know what? This is also, it's also a great time, guys. If you are in the space right now, let's retweet out the space. You know what I'm saying? Say, hey, we're going a little bit longer today. We're talking about gaming. You know, let's get some new people here. We got Rare Evo up in here. I'm super excited to chat with them. Grateful you was up next. You know what I'm saying? And then we'll swing over to Rare. Oh, we're getting a double workout in today? No, no. Double just, workout? Just, just, just some, oh. uh, just some background music, you know? This is uh, okay. the song that Seven made is a heater. Listen to this real quick. No, Turbo said it. I'm not working oh. out again. Nah, I ain't doing it. Are we working out? I'll work out. I'm getting in beach shape. Let's go. Are you doing squats? Uh, yeah. you yourself. Yeah. Jesus. I'll do some squats with you. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Let's get back on track. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're, we're back. going along. Yeah. 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 So I my uh, link to a video up on the on the space station no no go for it yeah any like if if here's the deal we're gonna just make this like a blanket thing if uh if you know you're if you're part of the crew if you're part of the family or if you like participate in web3 breakfast and you show up like you don't have to ask to post things up in the nest you can just do it like i trust you uh that's uh, how, how do you do that i, I don't even see don't you just go to a you, you just go to a tweet that's uh that's already been made and then like the bottom right corner of that it's got like the little half square with an arrow you hit that, and then the top thing above it, it's got a microphone. It'll say Web3 Gaming, and then it'll just post it up to the Xbox. Ah, oh, thanks. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Web3 Gaming going into our second half here. Uh, we have Grateful with his hand up. Grateful, want to get to you, brother. What's going on, family? What's the word? Going long, baby. Going long today. You know. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, so, real quick, what was, because uh, I want to get uh, some builders and some people that are that are highly educated up in here for the ordinal space. What date did you say that was going to be? November. If I can, I'll see what I can do. Absolutely. You, well, you better, because uh, you are our resident expert, and, uh, and pretty soon uh, I'm going to need you to start shooting some ordinal content for the channel. So, uh, yeah. Cool, man. Hell yeah. So, November 30th. I just 30th. don't get it, man. November 30th. Perfect. Right on. Yeah, dude. I mean, once, uh, hopefully after that space, you guys, like you said, will have a little bit more of an open mind. Um, it's pretty great to see with only a hundred people that like Ordinal Bitcoin outperforming every single NFT chain by a lot of volume for over a month. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a really cool project, bro. Uh, I, I bet one of them that one of them that's coming up is called Hashlings, and they're providing holders with access to miners um, at industrial discounts to where you can have everything pre-configured, set up, and shipped to you to mine, or they will hold them in a warehouse, and all your 
mining rewards go to directly to your Taproot address um, all the time through the year, as long as, as long as you own it pretty much forever. So there, there's some cool stuff going on, but I will try and reach out to some communities and get some people that are um, very well versed and that are actually building in this ecosystem to come over. Um, it makes Bitcoin cool again, man. It makes Bitcoin fun again. It was never fun before. It was just like, yeah, never. I'm going to hold Bitcoin because it's king and, it, and it's like gold. And I'll trade it because it's easy sometimes. But but now that there's a lot going on, it's bringing fun and attention. And, uh, and, it, and it's cool. So I appreciate you dedicating the space to me. Oh, 100%, man. Uh, we got to have an open mind. And, you know, if there are, you know, other ecosystems and opportunities out there, who are we? Uh, to with a closed mind, not to uh, explore that for ourselves. So, I, I'm I'm open to it. We're gonna check it out. I don't necessarily know, you know, how it'll be. Um, but my thing is, um, you know, somebody was saying that uh, I forget who I was talking to about this, uh, but it's really just a, a way to create, you know, in a sense, more Bitcoin, right? Because now what you're doing is you're taking that, you know, 18 or whatever million Bitcoin that we have now. And now you're breaking it up into another little side ecosystem that will ultimately, hopefully, raise the market cap of Bitcoin. Like you said, it provides another opportunity for people who maybe just don't want to sit there and hold it as a store of value. But I, I still don't know if that's the right idea. Like it should just kind of like stay in its lane, kind of thing. That's what that's where I am right now. Now November thirtieth, uh, you know, maybe maybe things will change. If you don't mind, if you don't mind me asking, what is the main? What about it, uh, I guess, is turning you guys off? Because I don't want you guys to well, like well, I don't want you to You should have like to wait till the 30th. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, hey. You got to wait till the 30th. Oh, we're yeah. talking gaming. All right, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, you got you to you you come back for that, you know? November 30th. This year, next week, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's two songs playing. It's That's going down. Too. Again. That was funny. Well, because I was playing two songs. Next week, Thursday, November 30th, a Bitcoin Ordinals only extravaganza. Nothing but Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto would be proud. You almost made me rip my shirt. Yeah. I was if, about to rip my shirt off. If I had a t-shirt, it was just I, a t-shirt, it probably would have happened too. Yeah, and I was like, no, I better not, because it's cold here in Ohio now. So I'm going to need my money, my hood and stuff. No, you know, they, that's what we're going to be chatting about, you know, Grateful Man. You know, we definitely appreciate you. And we, look, we love, you know, that, that you're passionate about it, you know what I mean? And make sure we don't miss it, too. I mean, that's 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 what we're here for, that's you know community. what I'm saying? So shout out to you. Yeah, you know, that's what we do as a family. So, But uh, Rare Evo, you got your hand up. What's up, family? Yo, yo. What's going on? What's going on, Jay Chains? How are you doing? Happy holidays to everybody. Turbo, what's going on? We're in Ohio as well. Our, our entire core team is based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. So nice. we need to link up sometime. That's yeah, sure. man. I need to make a trip down there. Come see you guys. Yeah, heck yeah. I wanted to contribute to the conversation really like what Pyro was saying. Like, also what Jay Chains was just saying. I don't really know where the future's at. Um, but I do think layer twos and some of these gaming chains are about to really take over. Uh, we're seeing a lot of it in our conversations. And I think the gaming market is is definitely about to start really poking its head out on the Web3 side uh, in 2024 here. So really excited to see a lot of these games like Shrapnel and My Pet Hooligan and a few other really good names out there like Big Time. And there's a lot out there uh, moving around right now. And I think some big even bigger moves are kind of on the horizon as well. Nice. Oh yeah, I love this. I love this my pet hooligan. I did love that. I saw that. Yeah, look at that, bro. They got Prime Gaming. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's one I definitely want to check out. That's what definitely. the dope little bunnies, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's a fun, it's just like a fun, lighthearted game. Kind of brings me back to like my first GTA days just running around you know, having fun doing what I want, you know what I mean? And a little like, you know, shoot at random robot type stuff, you know. Have and you know, uh, what's crazy rare, uh, you bring that up about like, uh, cause and we've all been kind of doing it, right? Like you know, this, like I, I started off with Chrono Forge. Chrono Forge like gauntlet. Someone else said another game. I forget what it was, was, you know, similar to this game. And I, I kind of fear that too. There's a game I've been checking out called, uh, Oh baby. And it's like a racing game. Uh, and it, I'm going to tell you right now, like, it looks great, but it looks straight up like they just took Mario Kart 
and just reskinned each like each thing. Like they, it, it almost feels and looks like they didn't even change the maps of okay. the game. And I, I, I mean, like, but I mean, it's cool though. You know, what I mean, I love Mario Kart. You know, like I think that that's great. I fear though, like if there will be cease and desist and things like that. Like where does can anybody they, know can, if the game, the game logic play? is protected? There's, I mean, yeah, it could be, but there, I, I don't wouldn't think so. Uh, like that would be genius, right? Is you just you would develop a game like something that everybody in the freaking world played, like GoldenEye, right? And now you make it to where you can earn some crypto or, or whatever. And so now you have these people that, I mean, it's the exact same gameplay, so it's not like anything's changed, so they'll you know know how to play it. And then you got some people that are good right off the rip, and then you've got some you know solid promo going. That's what I would that's what I, yeah, I, I don't know. Game guy, that's what I would do. But, uh, you know. Rare, do you know? I, I mean, you're, you're I, like... Yeah, I, th- I think we see a lot of that with like uh, like the Dirt Birds thing that kind of tried, and you know, there's a lot of like reskinning of games going on um, and trying to resell them as Web three. I ultimately don't think if you're not on the cutting edge of some of these games that are coming in the space, I, I don't think it's like long term viable. They might be collectors' items fun for a little bit, um, but they're not ones that are really going to capture mainstream adoption at that point and i really think that you know like to your point some of the racing games that are about to come out like virtua has deals with like jeep and shelby and all these companies you know what i mean and they're building something pretty interesting cornucopius has like a very interesting space one i mean so i think like people that are really building you know star atlas um you know is really building some interesting stuff and a lot of the newer gaming engines that are from scratch where they own uh, all the assets. And I think, you know, those games given enough time, you know, and what traditional games take to actually develop, putting these guys on like a three to five year and a lot of them have been at it for almost that, um, are going to start releasing, you know, base model games that people can play. And we're starting to see that interest, you know, especially on the live event side of games wanting to come demo what they've built now. And you know, you know, uh, rare. Like you bring up a really great point too. As you were talking, I was thinking. You know, what's really difficult for me um, is like in these games. Is like when I do my own research. You know, I'll go to like whatever the marketplace is. I'll take a look at when they came out. I'll go to their website. You know, and I'll kind of go through the whole thing. And a lot of these games, you know, they came out a, a year, two years ago. You know, and and it like it's almost like becomes like one of those things where it's like, you know, like I, I wonder, like you know, I've talked about it before, right? Can we get the hype back? You know what I mean? Like when these games start releasing, right? Like, can this hype come back? You know, I'm a there's a game out called the uh, the Deviants, and I actually think that they're minting their uh their crow collection uh today, actually. I, I believe it's today or tomorrow. Um, but uh, you know, like the they they're continuing to build, but we're not seeing the hype come back, right? It's like, you know, do you think that the game the, the gamings, these gaming NFTs and projects should wait to come out? Or like when they have something that's playable or should, you know, or should we see them, you know, doing what they're doing right now, right? Hey, this is what we got coming. This is how we're developing. This is how we're building. We've put this NFT out. These funds are going to be used for X, Y, and Z. And this is how we grow. You know, I'm kind of curious to what your opinion is uh, on that. That's an absolute great question. I, you know, I look forward to the bar getting raised higher and higher as time goes on. You know, early on, you could just release an NFT on the dream of a game. I mean, you know, some of those things were laughable, getting 70 million raises and just rugging. Um, and I think the bar gets raised higher as all these games start to release playable demos. And that that kind of weeds people out in itself. If you don't have a playable demo, if you haven't raised money and done your thing to actually build a game, it's going to get a lot tougher to scam folks and a lot tougher to raise funds and really set the moat in the gaming community so i think we're already starting to see that you know you have some big names coming in they've got like real development teams behind them that have that have history they're doxxed you know you can see their resume in the gaming industry and stuff like that and just as that bar raises over time and the the industry itself matures especially in game on the gaming side of web3 you have to think you know how far out on the risk curve and innovation we are here we're not just bitcoin innovation risk level we're you know moving into eth and layer twos and other gaming blockchains don't count out ronin uh you know the sky mavis team has big big money behind them they've been building through two bear markets now they're bringing up games on and they've got some big 
big, mm. big employees that have resumes with them, you know. So I think, you know, as we see this industry, it'll weed out a lot of that. And I think we're going to see a lot of that in 2024 at a live events. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with you on that, man. I think that that's definitely a great point. And I see AI Love and Cristiano both have their hands up. Uh, we'll go AI Love and then Cristiano. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? As far as the game is con- concerned, I just have a uh, quick question. With all the development inside of uh, applications such as Blender and AI, do you, are we projecting that the big name entities are, are going to be sustainable or are we going to start seeing more a, of a culture of uh, creatorism and uh, people identifying with the creator side of things? I just wanted to know your takes. And if so, uh, how far away do you think that it's going to be until it impacts our uh, ecosystem I think or the, the gaming industry? I, I I personally think that the we know the big guys are already in. They're gonna they're gonna keep their market share. And it's up to you know the Web three developer studios to create a game that uh, that can in some way, shape, or form compete. And I think that's that that's my opinion. I, I literally think that you know the the Googles and the Sonys and uh, or Microsoft and, and Sony would you know however you know they fund their platforms have far, far bigger war chests. Um, now, now you make something that's fun and there, you will take market share. And I think if you want to know a time frame, I think probably 10 to 15 years and it's going to come via a metaverse. It's not going to be, you know, now like the 10 other to side, 15. Yeah. hundred percent. Like it's not happening. Anytime. 20. Yeah. And, definitely not any time in, in the next five years or anything. Oh, I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess you're definitely on the mark with that. I mean, cause generally it takes two to three years just in development for some of these triple A games, you know? So, I mean, I, I mean, I guess you're definitely on the mark on that. I just, that just seems so far away, you know, like when we look at the technology and how fast it's moving and the things that we're growing, it's like, man, like I couldn't imagine trying to build something today for two years from now. You know, I mean, like, that just, things on that. like I, I'm super bullish on it. But I think we all become so bullish, we kind of eat the narrative these companies put out, like, oh, this is about to happen in the next couple of years. And it's definitely, it's coming, like, you know, it's just going to take longer than most think for it to really be adopted. I think a lot of that is next generation growing up with it, you know, and knowing how to use it and develop on it. But totally agree with Jay Chains. Bam, 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 bam. And we do have a... Oh, here you go. I got you, bro. I got you. Let's see here. Let me see here. Oh, nope. Wrong one. Oh, there we go. Okay, there it is. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we did have a comment on uh, on YouTube uh, from en- Enrique. I asked him because he was, you know, he was not excited about the GTA 6. And uh, he says he is not bullish on any AAA games. Uh, but he's saying that AA games is where it's at. And I think that, there, you know, there's definitely some great points because AA could come out way faster than these AAA expectations, uh, which really is like in air quotations. But Cristiano, you have had your hand up, family. Uh, what is the word? Yeah, I was going to answer your original question, um, but J Chain's kind of answered it perfectly. I agree that, you know, we've been rugged too many times, especially that I came in through blockchain gaming and it's just like sad to see. I'm like, what happens to all those NFTs and the playtime? Do I get it back? Like, that's the whole reason I was in blockchain gaming. I didn't want these, like, you know, these. Um, these down these things that I would buy or whatever to just be like burned forever in the game when the new update or whatever happened, right? So if these games shut down, isn't that kind of worse, right? You're never getting that money back. So well, I think um, I think we'll see acquisitions though. I think the the games that yeah. that are good, they'll get picked up by larger studios, which will get picked up by probably the main studios, and they'll just run them as independents for sure. Yeah, and at least I had like the play time. Like I had fun playing those games. Right? I only played games that were fun to play, so I still have that, right? But I didn't like, you know, get into, you know, um, Alluvium or anything or things like that, like beforehand or these games in Gala that never even came out, right? People bought ships and stuff like that. And so uh, I would say, yeah, like having something playable is super huge in this new market. And then I would say for the second point, um, I would say like th- the big companies are going to develop, and then in the fringes, you're going to have the real innovation, like stuff like Cyber Ape Yacht Club, what he did with the Unreal Kingdom, right? As a protest against the bigger companies right and so you're always going to have that and that's like yeah like the double a gaming and like that's going to happen so much faster but i think like enacting protocols 
like us enacting protocols as like founders because we don't have the big, you know, uh, the big render farms or whatever. So let's say we find a way to say, hey, let's decentralize, you know, render our games and have this shared, you know, render node that runs on Ethereum or whatever that's rendering all of our games. And then, you know, you're using descriptions to write all the call data, you know, write all the scores of all everyone's games and, and you know, keep any interoperable data that needs to be there. And so stuff like that, like protocols, like we'll, we will all enact that as a people before uh, the corporations even think to or care to enact that, right? They're going to be like, oh, we don't want to play with the unwashed masses. We're not going to let them in. We're not going to enact that protocol. And then eventually we'll form enough pressure and they'll be like, hey, great news. One day, you know, we announced the, the protocols enabled in our in horizon worlds and we'll be able to, you know, our metaverse, our metaverse, the real metaverse, there's going to be two metaverses. There's going to be the corporate one and there's going to be ours, the real people's one. And I think that there's going to be a bridge one day they decide to let us in and we're going to be like, nah, fuck you. You know, then that's like the war is going to start. But and if you look at Ready Player One, um, I think that book really, really nailed it that the corporations would come in and try to battle us for control of the Oasis. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be the battle of our times. I think that's going to be the rest of our lives. You that's, know? that's where we're going to see it. I uh, I did see a uh, something come in on uh, Twitter or X uh, in the feed during the conversation from DP Karib. Uh, talking about the uh, the B and B game marketplace, uh, it is heating up. I have seen some articles uh, and stuff on that. So uh, if you just heard, I, can you hear that? Like, was that an obnoxious noise a second ago? Yeah. Okay. So that's Trello. So you know, because I've got my my butler in there to uh, to do some, handle some things for me uh, when I add a new <laughs> card. So I added a new card to uh, to talk about the the B and B marketplace stuff that's happening there. So so that's added in there. Thank you, DP Kareeb, for uh, for bringing that back up in the mind while we're talking about this stuff. So we got we'll have a show about all this stuff coming up pretty soon. So uh, hey, I, this has been fun, and, man. This well, is, this is great. <clears throat> Before, before, before we wrap it up, Jay, uh, you know, because I know that people, you know, like we had a lot of great, you know, conversations and stuff. Uh, in Miami, uh, Seven and I are working on an event at the mansion, at mm -hmm. the Razzle Dazzle uh, for the Player Two Studios. Uh, you know, like we're going to be getting uh, gaming gamers together, networking, get that a part of the documentary, talking about, you know, like what our expectations are, what we're looking forward to, getting to meet people. Mm -hmm. And so if you are uh, a listener uh, that, uh, you know, would like to be involved with that with us, please reach out to me in the DMs. Uh, we'll be working on that today. You know, Rare would love to have you a part of it. You know, anybody that's here uh, that, that's in the game, let's, uh, let's link and uh, get that happening for you. And if you guys are interested in, uh, you know, in some future things, uh, you know, as far as like uh, game reviews and, you know, get more deep diving into content with uh, what you have going on, definitely reach out to us, man. It's a great conversation. And man, Jay, that last 30 minutes went so fast. Man. I'm so sad. Now I have to go to work. I know. Mm. I know. I know. Me too. Wait, it's has okay. anyone played uh, engine games? Nope. Not me. Oh, do you, want, like do you a... want me to create a Trello card about engine games? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not uh, being a smart like ass. During I'm the bull run, I spent like 150 dollars on some elder something fine bracelet. Get ready for the and noise. I have no clue what to do with it. Yeah, hit him with the noise. Hit you with the noise. Hey, there my uh, there American is. friends here. Just uh, happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Thank you, man. Gobble gobble. Oh, thank you, Mike. You know, uh, go. Uh, even though again, we talked about the how the origin of the thankfulness started, but uh, that's not what we're thankful for. Uh, we're thankful for family. I'm thankful for Turbo. I'm thankful for this entire community. Y'all are just absolutely amazing. Appreciate you guys. This has been a fun, ha this has been a short week. It feels like I, I tweeted out this morning, today feels like a Friday, even though it's a Wednesday. But uh, we'll be back on Friday for a real Friday. So go get your turkey tomorrow. Gobble, gobble, you mother chuckers. And we will see you back on Friday. Uh, for Web3 Breakfast, we listen to some music, talk about a week in review, probably talk about how full we still are, any uh, Black Deal Fridays, uh, Black Friday deals. I don't know. We'll see you. Adios. Appreciate you guys all being in the DMs about coming to Las Vegas. Let's go. Awesome, man. Let's go, baby. All right. Adios, guys. We'll see you, uh, we'll see you on Friday. <laughs>